This video is sponsored by Dev Mountain. If you're interested in learning web development, iOS, or UX design, Dev Mountain is a 12 week design and development boot camp intended to get you a full time position in the industry. To learn more, visit devmountain.com or click the link in the description below. Hey, what's going on, guys? So, in this project, we're going to be building the Netflix landing page or the Netflix homepage. And I didn't use any of the code from the actual website. It's all I did was look at it and then recreate it using. Um, HTML and in my own CSS styling so we'll be using a lot of the CSS grid system we'll be using overlays shadows and stuff like that so this is it here this is the project uh, and then we'll look at the actual Netflix site so we have this main showcase area at the top we have the logo the sign in button the main text call to action and then we have this background overlay with an image and we have this shadow this inset shadow around the edges which gives it kind of a cool look um, and this goes down about 93 viewport heights or heights or so um, normally I would have this go all the way down but the regular site the real site you can see they don't so I just kind of wanted to mimic that um, and then down here we have the tabbed area so we will be adding a bit of JavaScript to give it this effect basically we have a tab the active tab has a, the red border at the at the bottom if we click this one you'll see we get this content so we'll be using the grid to align all this stuff pick your price this is a style table we'll be creating so we will be adding a little bit of JavaScript and then down at the bottom we just have a footer where again we'll be using CSS grid so pretty simple as far as looks uh, but there is a lot of styling that we have to do it is responsive which I'll show you in a second so this is the actual Netflix site which you can see is very very similar um, the icons are different they used SVG icons I used font awesome Uh, so you can see that this, you know, this stuff is pretty much the same. This is the same. We've got the table here and then the footer at the bottom. So very similar. And if we check the responsiveness out, let's make it go down to about 960 and you can see it changes up a little bit. So the logo goes over here. The text gets smaller. The viewport height gets smaller and uh, you can see the tabs still look pretty good and the footer. So once we hit about 700, then this gets smaller. This will stack up. This content stacks up here. Uh, table looks pretty good, but when you get to a certain, uh, you know, if you go too small, it kind of get, it gets cut off a little bit, but you can mess around with the container if you want. But um, all in all, I think it's a pretty, pretty neat project. And I think we'll sharpen your CSS skills. I might even add it to my modern HTML and CSS course on Udemy, which I'll have the link to in the description if you're interested. All right, so let's go ahead and get started. I'm going to jump into VS Code and I have some files created here, but I haven't written anything. Uh, basically, I just have my index HTML, my CSS folder with a style.css, my JS folder with a main.js, and then I have my images folder. And in the images folder, I have the background, the Netflix logo, the tab one image. And then tab two has these three images here so you can get these. I'll have a link in the description, probably to a code pen where you can get the images or you can just get them off the actual Netflix site. All right, so let's get started. We're going to jump into the HTML and I think the way I'm going to do this is in sections. We'll do the showcase area first doing the HTML and the styling um, and then we'll jump to the tabs and then we'll jump to the footer. I'm going to save the JavaScript for last, though. Okay, we'll do that last. So let's start off here with just some boilerplate using Emmet. So I'll do exclamation enter or tab. And I'm not going to explain every little thing. I'm expecting that you guys have at least a little experience with HTML and CSS. If you don't, I would suggest going and watching my crash courses or even taking my Udemy course. Uh, but just get familiar with the basics. All right, so let's say Netflix. Uh, I'm just copying the title that they have. So watch. TV shows online and watch movies online. Okay, so we also want to link our style sheet. So CSS slash style CSS. And then we're also using font awesome. So I'm going to go and grab that CDN at fontawesome.com. Start using free and then we'll just grab this right here and let's paste that right here. 
Okay, and that should do it for the head area. So I'm going to open this up now. You can open it, you know, through your file system if you want. I'm using an extension called Live Server for VS Code. So I'm going to right click and open with Live Server. And we just get a blank page for now. Okay, and I'm just going to close up um, the finished version. I'm going to keep the original Netflix uh, landing page open though, just for reference. So we're going to work on the showcase area, which is this whole area here. Basically, we're going to have a showcase top, which will be this part, and then a showcase content, which will be this part. And then obviously we have to style the, you know, the overlay and background and stuff like that. So we'll start with the HTML. So inside of our body, we're going to use a header tag here. HTML5 semantic header tag and let's give it a class of showcase and we're going to have our showcase top and inside the top showcase top we're going to have an image which is going to be our logo for the alt I'll just put Netflix and then under that we're going to have our our button now this is the sign in button and I like to use utility classes if you've watched me do any uh, CSS you know that I like to create classes for buttons alerts badges all, all types of uh, utilities so we're going to have a utility class called btn uh, and it's going to be rounded so I have a class of btn rounded that will create as well and this isn't actually going to go anywhere so under showcase top let's do showcase content and we're going to have an h1 here we're going to say see what's next and underneath the h1 we're going to have a paragraph and we're going to say watch anywhere cancel anytime and then on, under that we get we have that big button with that you know watch free for 30 days so let's do an a tag It's going to have the BTN class and this is going to be a very large button. So we're going to have a BTN dash XL class. Oops. All right. And then inside here, we're going to have watch, let's say watch free for 30 days. And then I'm going to have a Chevron icon. So I'm going to use font awesome. I'm going to put I dot. I'm using Emmett here. a class of FAS and then a class of FA dash Chevron dash right. And then I'm also going to have a custom class of BTN dash icon so that I can push it over a little bit. All right. So let's just see what that gives us. Okay, not much. We can see we have the little icon here. Um, the logo, we're going to change the size and all that stuff. Don't worry about that. But that's it for the showcase as far as the HTML goes. So now we're going to turn this into this using CSS. All right, so let's jump into style CSS. And before we do stuff with the showcase, let's just add some uh, some some base styling. All right. Now I'm going to actually use a variable. So I'm going to use CSS variables or custom properties are actually called. So I'm going to say on the root scope. I'm going to have a primary color just just in case you want to actually change the Netflix red to something else. You can easily do it by just changing this variable. So the color is E. What is it? E five zero nine one four. So that's that that red color. All right. And I think that's the only variable we need. I had a dark color and light color, but I don't think we actually use it. So. Yeah, I don't think we use it, so I'll just leave this for now. All right. Now I want to add a reset, so I'm going to say for everything, let's do box sizing and set that to border box so that width doesn't affect. I'm sorry, padding doesn't affect width or anything like that. I'm also going to take off the margin and padding from everything. All right. So that's our reset. And then for the body, uh, we're using font family Arial. It's actually Helvetica, but um, I can't find Helvetica for free. So we're just using Arial. Uh, and then we're also going to add the font smoothing anti aliased. So we're going to add the uh, vendor prefix of WebKit dash font smoothing. 
and anti alias. All right, and then we're going to add a background. So the body background, I'm actually going to make black. And let's say the color, I'm going to make、uh, a gray. So triple nine. All right, so that's the body. Unordered lists, I'm going to just get rid of bullets. So list style, none. These are just some, some base styling that I do for pretty much everything.、Uh, for the headings, I, the text is going to be that light gray, but for headings, I want them to be white. So I'm going to do H1 through 4. H4. And let's do color white. All right. And for the links, so any links, let's make the color white and take away the underlines. I'm going to do text decoration none. All right. I'm just going to turn on、uh, format on save. I don't think I have that. So I have the prettier extension installed, which is a formatter, but I want it to format on save. And I think I have that shut off. I do. So I'm just going to check that. So that way, if I save, it just kind of formats things for me. There we go. Okay, so let's see. Paragraphs. Remember, we, we turned off the margin and padding for everything. However, paragraphs, I do want to have a default margin on the top and bottom of 0.5 rem. Okay, and I'm using rem units for the most part.、Uh, if you're not familiar with rem units, I have a video explaining M and rem units. Uh, basically, one rem is equivalent to whatever the number of pixels of the font size of the root HTML element, which is this right here, which by default is 16. So, one rem is going to be 16 pixels in our case.、Um, 0.5 is going to be 8 pixels because half of 16 is 8. Two rems would be 32 pixels because 16 times 2 is 32.、Um, if I were to change the font size of the HTML element, Explicitly, like let's say to 10, 10 pixels, then one rem would be 10 pixels. But in our case, it's going to be a multiplier of 16. Hopefully, that makes sense. And then any images we have are going to take up 100% of the width of its container. All right, so those are the base styles. If we save that and take a look, it should look like this. You can see the, the, pad, the margins、um, gone from the, the body and the headings and stuff like that. All right, so let's grab the. Whoops, this should be a semicolon. Let's do the showcase. So, showcase,、I'm, I want this to have a width of 100%, and then the height, I'm going to have this be 93 VH, okay, which is a, a viewport height. So, basically, you can think of, and ignore the size of this logo for now, but you can think of. The viewport height here, so the height of the window, as 100 slices across, and I'm taking up 93. So it'll leave a little bit of room at the bottom, just like if we look right here. So it's basically going to take up, you know, down to the around this area. If you want it to take up the whole thing, which I would prefer, then you would do 100 viewport heights, but I'm just trying to stick to the format of, of Netflix. All right, so let's see what else do we want on showcase. We want to position relative because we are going to position some stuff absolute within it. And then we're going to add the background image here. So the background is going to be a URL. And it's going to be, we want to go dot dot slash outside of the CSS folder into images. And then we want background JPEG. We just want to add some other attributes here. So no repeat. We're going to center. Center on bo both the x and y axis, and then we want to cover, and that should be good. So, if we save that and take a look, now we have the background image. All right, so you know what? Let's deal with the let's deal with the showcase top because this this logo is going to aggravate me. So, let's do showcase、um, dash top and Let's position this relative. Because I'm actually going to position the logo absolute within it, the logo and the link or the button.、Um, so the, the showcase top, we want a.、Uh, we'll do that after the z index so I can explain it. 
but this is going to have a height of I'm going to do 90 pixels. All right, and then let's do the image. So we want the showcase top image and let's cut that sucker down big time. Let's do 170 pixels. So if I save now, you can see that it's it's much smaller. Uh, it's around the same size as this. All right. So as far as the image, we're going to position this absolute, which means we're just we're positioning positioning it inside of its closest uh, parent element that has a position relative, which is showcase top. Okay, so we're positioning it inside that and we want to say uh, from the top, we want to go down 50% and from the left 50%. Now, if I save that, we take a look, you can see that it's 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 down 50% because remember the showcase top is 90 pixels high, right? So it's 50% down and 50% over. However, this also at the length of the actual image uh, is included in that, you know, in that positioning. So it looks further over to the right than it should be. So what I'm going to do is add a transform translate um, property here to kind of put it into place. So let's say transform. And we're going to say translate. And this will kind of make up for the the actual height and width of the the image. So we're going to do negative 50 percent. Uh, when you do negative, it's basically going to go up and left. So we want to do negative 50 percent here as well. So now if I go ahead and save now, it's pretty much smack dab in the middle, which is where we want it. All right. Now the link, which is I can't. Where is the link? Um, can we even see it? Where the heck? You know what? Maybe we should style the button. Because I don't even know where the link is. Watch anywhere. Cancel. It should be the sign in link. Did I forget to add it? Oh, I didn't put any text in it. <laughs> Should say sign in. There we go. So there's our link. So I guess we'll position it and then we'll do the the button utility class after. So let's add underneath showcase top image. Let's do showcase top a. Okay, because it's the only uh, it's the only link in the showcase top. And we're also going to position that absolute. And we're going to say from the top 50%, move it down and then from the right zero. Okay, and I'm also going to add this transform translate here just to move it to where I want it. All right, so if we take a look now, you can see that there it is right there. And it's pretty much in the middle of the logo, which is where I want it. Okay, so let's see. Let's do the let's do the button class just so this, you know, we want it to look like this somewhat like that. And uh, we'll be using the button class quite a bit. Now, usually what I like to do is have our utility classes at the bottom. So we'll continue on up here, but then at the bottom we'll have our utility classes like button or buttons. So let's do class of BTN. Um, and we're going to have quite a bit here. I'm going to display it as an inline block. So basically it's it's uh, it's inline, but we can add height with stuff like that. Uh, the background is going to be. The background is going to be our variable. So the way that we do custom properties is we define it above like we did and then we use var parentheses and then we can put in our primary color variable. Okay, and then the text color, let's do white. I'm going to add some padding. I'm going to use rems. So I'm going to do 0.4 rem. And that's the top and bottom. And then 1.3 rem left and right. And font size is going to be one rem. And let's align to the center. So text align to the center. And we want to remove any border. And the cursor should be a pointer because 
you, you want to think of you want to think of making you know making your your code scalable so we might use this button class on a form at some point you know obviously in this pr particular project we're not but you want to think of the future um, so we don't actually need this on a link but if we use it on a button somewhere we would want it to be a pointer so we're also going to add in uh, margin right I usually add margin right just in case uh, we put buttons you know in in line next to each other and let's see let's add an outline of none because we don't want that annoying looking outline um, and then we'll add a little box shadow here so let's do box shadow 0 1 pixel 0 and then RGBA which is RGB alpha So it's going to be black 000 and then the alpha or the transparency is going to be 0.45. And then let's just add a little bit of a roundedness to this. So border radius 2 pixels. Okay. Now on hover, let's do BTN hover. I'm not going to add change the color or anything. All I'm going to do is make the opacity 0.9. So just make it a little see-through which will give it that effect of changing the color. Uh, and remember we have that button rounded so by default it has 2 pixel border radius but what i want to do is if it's rounded if we add this class i want to make it 5 pixels so it's a little more rounded all right let's also do our sizes so we have btn-xl and for that i'm going to make it Um, 2 rem, which in our case is 32 pixels, because remember one rem is 16 pixels. Padding. Let's do 1.5 rem, top and bottom, 2.1 rem, left and right, and then we want it to be uppercase. So text transform uppercase, which is it's better to do it this way than to actually you know type in uppercase letters in your HTML. All right, so we have a button XL. We're also going to have a button large, so I'm just going to copy that. And the only difference here is going to be this is going to be one rem, and then the padding will be a little less. We'll do 0.8, and let's do 1.3. All right, so let's check that out. So you can see our sign-in button looks pretty good. Um, this should be bigger. Did I use large? Oh, wait a minute. This should be large. LG. There we go. All right. So I'm trying to think if I want to do the overlay. You know what? Let's let's handle this part first, and then we'll do the overlay last. So this needs to be in the middle, and the text needs to be bigger. So let's try to think here. Yeah, let's do the showcase content because all this is wrapped in in a class of showcase content. So we'll go back up here. Let's go right below the showcase top A, and we'll say showcase content, and we're gonna position this relative, and let's do a margin auto. Okay, we want to move it to the middle. We're going to do a display flex, but we don't want it to be uh, a flex row. If I save this and we take a look, you can see that everything is now lined up horizontally, which we don't want. We want it vertically. So to do that, we just change the flex direction to column instead of row, which is the default. Okay, we also want to justify the content to the center and align items. to the center which will move everything to the center also the text itself um, also make that center okay and if we save that and take a look good now we need to move it down quite a bit so I'm going to add a actually let's yeah let's do a margin top of 9 rem which is quite a bit so about right here yeah now this we want to work on this part the h1 in the paragraph obviously that's way too small uh, the button looks good but the text needs to be bigger 
So let's add that right here. We'll say showcase content h1. I'm going to text transform. Oops, text transform to uppercase. And um, we're going to change the actually, I'm sorry the this isn't going to be uppercase because if we look at the actual site, this is the only text that is not uppercase. So we don't want that actually. What I do want to do is change the font weight to 700 um, and then let's increase the font size big time. So we're going to do 5.2 rem and then let's add a line height of 1.1 rem or just 1.1 which is M um, and then margin. I just want margin bottom to rem. zero everywhere else. So to rem. All right, let's check that out. Good. So now we want this text which you can barely see. So that's a paragraph, so we'll just do showcase content p. And this I actually do want to text transform uppercase. And let's make it white. and font weight I'm going to do 400 and font size Oops. so font size we're going to go with 1.9 rem and line height 1.25 and then again margin 002 rem and that should do it okay good So obviously the background image is way too bright, so we need to add an overlay. We're also going to add some inset shadows. So there's many ways to do this. We're actually going to use a pseudo class or, or pseudo element. I forget what exactly what it's called, but we can use before and after. So basically we can add kind of like a ghost element to style um, inside of, uh, you know, CSS. by using before or after. So I'm going to go right under the showcase, uh, which is right here. And let's do showcase and then we want to do double double colon. You can also do single that will work as well. And then after. Now before and after you want to have a content property, but we don't actually want to insert any content. So we're just going to put just quotes here. And then the idea is that we want to position this inside of our showcase because our showcase is positioned relative. So we want this to be positioned inside of it absolute. Okay, and then we want it to go from the top zero, uh, top zero position and left zero position, which is the top corner, top left corner. And we want it to span the entire thing. So 100% wide and 100%. percent height. All right. Now the Z index, I'm going to set that to one and then the background. If I let me just show you real quick, if I do like background red and we take a look, it's just covering the whole thing, right? So we positioned it absolute top zero. So it starts here. It goes all the way across, all the way down. Z index one makes it so that it's on top of everything. Now, The way that I'm going to do this is the background color. Instead of setting it to a solid color, I'm going to set it to an RGBA value, which is basically a transparent color. So I'm going to do black 000 for red, green, blue. And then for the alpha value, I'll do 0.6. So now if we take a look, you can see through it. All right. Now we have an issue here, and that is that the text is under it's underneath that showcase after. we need to bring it up this part and the, the showcase top. So the way that we can do that is by increasing the Z index on those properties. All right, so let's go to showcase top and let's set the Z index to two. Okay, if you're not familiar with Z index, basically the higher it is, the closer it is to you. So if I save that and now we go back, now it's on top. Okay, because the the overlay Uh, has a Z index of one. So now this part, the showcase content, we want to do the same thing. 
So we'll go here and we'll say Z index 2. And now if we go back, now it's on top. All right, so the last thing we need to do here is the box shadow. Um, so I'm actually going to paste this in because it's quite a bit to, to type in here. Actually, no, I want to show you guys kind of how this works. So let's go to our showcase after. So our overlay, I'm going to just paste this this part in. So this is giving us a box shadow inset. This is basically going to be the, the left and the top. And these values are going to be how how thick the shadow is. So if we take a look at this, you can see that it's the this part. You can see the shadow here and then at the top. Okay, there's no shadow on this side. And if we increase these values, like let's say 320 and look now you can see how far the shadow comes out. So if you're not happy with what I have here, You can always mess around with it and change it. I think that looks pretty good, though. However, I also want the shadow on this side. So what we want to do is uh, we'll take this whole thing here. We can put a comma and paste that in. Now, since we want it on the other side, we want to put a negative value here and here. Okay, but I'm going to keep it at 120 and 100, just negative. And now you can see we have it. on the bottom and the right. So it goes all the way around. All right. So I think that that looks pretty good. So now we're going to do the tabs, which is this area, these three tabs with the icons. Um, so we're going to jump back into our HTML and let's go underneath the header. And we're going to have a section with the class of tabs and we're going to be using a container because if we look at the Netflix site, Notice how these these don't go all the way over to the side. Same thing in here. So we're going to have a container to restrict that. So we have a class of container and then each tab is going to have an ID of tab dash one through tab dash three and also a class of tab dash item. Now, the reason for the ID is because we need to target this within the JavaScript. Okay, basically we need to have an event to click these things and have the content change. So within here, we're going to have a. Uh, actually, you know what this. We, yeah, let's add the tab border class as well. By default, because that's this red border right here. is going to be a class of tab border. And what we want to do in the JavaScript is when we click another one of these, we want to switch it over, basically take that class off of here, put it onto here. But this will be the default so we can put that, you know, the first one we can have a class of tab border. Um, and then we're going to have an icon. This is going to be FAS, so font awesome. And then FA dash door dash open. And with font awesome, you can change the size by adding F.A. dash. You can do 2x, 3x, 4x. We're going to do two, uh, 3x. OK, so that'll give us the icon. And then let's have a paragraph here. And I'm going to give this a class of hide dash SM, which I'll show. I'll tell you why in a second. And then let's say cancel any time. So hide SM just means that when we're going to have a media query, that will make this disappear on a, when it's on a small screen. So it'll just show the icon. All right. So we can use this class anywhere where we want it to not show on small screens because it just gets too cluttered. So we're just going to remove it on on mobile screens. So I'm going to just grab this div here and copy it down twice. And then this next one will be tab two, tab three. Uh, and then we want to remove the tab border from these two. And then for the icon, the second one is going to be F.A. dash tablet dash alt. And the text is going to be watch. Anywhere. And then let's see this one here. The icon is going to be F.A. dash tags. And this text is going to be. Pick. your price. Actually, it's not doing uppercase here or here. All right, so we'll save that. That's the tab section. Let's take a look. So it looks 
horrible right now. So we're going to style that. So we'll jump into our CSS. And we'll go underneath all the showcase stuff, but above the buttons, like I said, I want to keep the the utility stuff down at the bottom. So tabs. So tabs itself, we're going to have a background. Oh, we are going to use a variable here. So let's do a, a dark color variable. So we have a primary color. I'm just going to copy that down, change this to one four. three times and we're going to call this dark color. All right, and then we'll go back down to our tabs and we're going to use this right here by doing var dark color. All right, and I'm going to push it down a little by just adding padding top of 1 rem and then we want a border bottom. So this is the border for the whole entire section. It's going to be 3 pixels solid and let's do 3D 3 times. But we need a number sign here. Okay, and then uh let's see. I think that should be good. So let's save that. So you can see that it has this this color or this lighter it's not the black background it's a little lighter now these three icons these sections we want to just use the grid to align them like this now the way that the grid works is you have a parent container let's just look at the html you have a parent container that you display as grid and then you have the grid items directly inside now we don't want the class tabs to be the grid because if we do that only the container div that's the only direct child so that would be the grid item we want these three to be the grid items these three divs so what we'll do is we'll put the grid on this container on tabs container okay so let's do that let's say tabs container and display grid and we're going to use grid template columns Now we want three even rows. So we could do one FR, which is a fraction unit. We could do that three times or we could just say repeat and we could say repeat three times one FR and that will make them all even. And then I want a little bit of gap in between. So grid gap, I'm going to do one rem. Okay, I also want to align everything to the center. So align items center and justify content. to the center and also text align to the center. Whenever you're using Flexbox or the grid, <laughs> you use this quite a bit. So, let's save that. Let's take a look. All right. Um now we haven't we haven't specified the container yet. That's why it's, you know, these are so far over. Um so, let's actually do that. Let's create the container class. Actually, we should have uh, some padding here as well. Padding top. Oh, you know what? I'm going to add the padding on each individual div. That's why. All right. So, anyways, let's let's create the container class, which is take technically a utility. So I'm going to go down. We'll just go right above buttons. Cuz the container we're going to use in a couple different places. So I'm going to give this a whoops, we should probably create the class first. So I'm going to give this a max width of 70% of the screen. All right. And then we want everything in the middle, so we want to do margin auto. Uh and then let's do overflow. hidden we want everything to stay within the container and then padding i just want on the on the left and right i want 2 rem so i'm going to do 0 top and bottom 2 rem left and right so let's save that and go back and now you can see that these are now within the container which is 70% of the screen if i were to make this smaller you can see that it shrinks up all right so back to um where were we back to the tabs 
So let's see. We have tabs container. That's all set for the font. I want to make it a little bigger and add a little bit of padding to the top. So let's do tabs paragraph. Let's do font size. We'll do 1.2 rem and then padding top. Let's do let's do 0.5 rem. All right, so check that out. So these are it's a little bigger now and we get some padding on the top. Now let's see. I want padding on the top and bottom of of these. So what I'll do here is I'll say inside tabs or rather the tabs container the direct div so each div I want to add padding we'll do 1.5 rem on the top and bottom so now if I save that and we go back now we have some spacing on the top and bottom so we just targeted each div I also want to have a hover effect here so basically When we hover over these, I want the, I want the text to be white, the text and the icon and also have a, a pointer cursor so we can grab this. And just say hover. And say color white and cursor. Pointer. Okay, so now we get that that effect. All right, so let's see the tab border class, which we only have on the first one right now. Uh, I don't even know if we'll be able to see it because we have no content under it, but it's going to be that red border. So we might as well add that. I'm just going to go right here and say class of tab dash border. And we're going to say border bottom. And it's going to be the, the red color, which is our primary color. We have that in a variable. And it's going to be four pixels solid. Okay, and there you go. You can see the red border at the bottom. All right, so now I think we're all set as far as the tabs. Now we want to do the tab content, which is, you know, this stuff here. So there's three different tab uh, content areas. So let's go to our HTML and we're going to create another section and give this a class of tab dash content. And we're going to have a container. We want to contain everything in here as well. Um, and we're going to have three, like I said, three different sections. So whoops, I'm actually going to put a comment here and say tab content one just so we know what we're dealing with. So this is going to have an ID of tab content one. It's also going to have a class of tab dash content item. And the way that the when we do the JavaScript, what's going to happen is when we click on an, on one of the tabs, it's going to add a class of show to the correct tab content. Now, the first one we always want to show first so we can initialize it with the show class, if that makes sense. And it, it will make sense more sense later. Now in here. Uh, let's see, we're going to. Since we're adding a show class here, the show is basically going to be display block, right? Um, however, we're going to be using the grid. To for this to align this part of tab one uh, tab content one in this part. So we need a grid wrapper basically. So I'm going to create another class of um, let's call this one. What do we want to do? Let's do tab content. Or we'll just say tab one. Yeah, tab one dash content dash inner. All right, actually, I said tab content one. It should be tab one dash content. This is important. You'll see why later when it comes to the JavaScript. 
Okay, so we have this inner. This is going to be the grid container, and then we're going to have two grid items. One is going to be this, this part here, the text and the button, and one will be the image. So within here, let's do a div. And we'll have our text. So I'm going to do a paragraph. Now I want this text to be quite large. So I'm going to have a class of text dash LG. And then in here, uh, I'm just going to paste this text in. You guys can copy it. So it just says if you decide Netflix isn't for you, no problem, no commitment, cancel online anytime. And then under that paragraph within this div, because this div is the first grid item. We're going to have a link with the class of BTN and let's do BTN dash LG. All right. And then the text is going to say watch free for 30 days. So this div is the first grid item. And then the next is just the image, uh, which is going to be in the image folder and it's going to be tab. content onepng All right, so if we save that and we go to our project, it's going to look like this because we haven't added any CSS. So let's do that. We'll just do one tab at a time. So in our style sheet, let's go. Let's see, let's go under the tab border. And we have an ID. of tab dash one dash content. Now, there's not actually any styling I need to put on the ID. I need to put it on the inner because remember, that's where the the grid is displayed is this right here. So I'll just grab this class tab one content inner and we want to display elements inside of it as a grid. Let's add our grid template columns. And I have a, a, cra a crash course on the grid system if you're interested, if, if this makes no sense. Um, so basically, we just want two even columns. So we're going to say repeat twice one fraction. And we'll add a grid gap, give it a little spacing of two rem. And then again, align items center and justify content center. Okay, so if we save that and we take a look, there we go. Um, let's see, we haven't added the text styling. So this is really, really small. And remember, we gave it a class of text LG. So I think that this is a good time to add our text utilities. So let's go. I'll go right under container and let's say text styles. All right, so we're going to have a text. Uh, dash XL, which I don't I don't believe we even use this class in, in this project. But again, I like to build things to scale. If we for some reason need to have really large text, we can use it um, later. So let's say font size. Let's do two rem. And let's do margin bottom one rem. All right, I'm just going to. copy this and let's do text LG and LG is just going to be a little smaller. It's going to be 1.8 and margin bottom one rem. While we're at it, though, let's add a text center in case we just want to simply add, you know, align it to the center. So we'll do text align center and then I'm also going to have a text dark class. That will just give it a color of triple nine, which is just a light gray. All right, so we'll save that. Let's go back. And now you can see we have the the larger text. Now, I do want this to be. White, right? Yeah, so let's actually give the large text. Hmm, actually. Yeah, let's we'll just add the color white to these classes here. Oops. All right. There we go. 
Okay, so that's pretty good. We do need some padding though. So tab. Yeah, the tab one content. Oh, you know what? Let's add padding to this class here, tab content. Probably should have did that first. So let's go back up to right right above where we did the tab one stuff and we'll actually put a comment here because this is all the tab content stuff. And let's say class tab content and let's do padding. Let's do three rem top and bottom. And then the background should be black. And yeah, that's what we'll do is we'll make the color white here instead of doing it on the text classes like I just did. I'm going to get rid of that. All right, so let's check that out. So now we have spacing here at the top and bottom. All right, good. So that's our first tab. Now we have two more to do. So the way that I'm going to do this since we don't have the JavaScript implemented is I'm just going to comment out for now. Tab content one, which ends here. Okay, so I'll just temporarily comment that out and let's add our tab two content, which ha actually has a lot more markup because we have those three areas with the images. Um, so let's I guess we could. I'll we'll just we'll just type it out. So let's do an ID of tab two content. Gonna have a class of tab content item. And in here we're gonna have basically uh, two sections. Let me just show you. So if we go to the actual Netflix site, we have this top area and then we have the bottom. So we're gonna have tab two content top, tab two content bottom. And we're gonna use the grid in, on both areas. So let's first do a class of tab to content top. And in here we're going to have a paragraph. We're going to use our text dash LG class. And I'm just going to grab the text real quick. Okay, and then underneath that paragraph, we're going to have a link with the class of BTN and we're going to use BTN. LG here, our large button. Okay, and for the text, we're going to say watch free for 30 days. So that's the, the tab to content top. Now we need the bottom. So directly under that, let's do class tab to content bottom. And this is going to be a grid as well with three items. So we're actually going to do three divs. So this is the first one. And each div is going to have an image and two paragraphs. So if we look at this, the Netflix site, we have the image and then this will be a paragraph and then this will be a paragraph. I believe. Yes. Okay. so. Let's do image and the first image is going to be it's going to be this tab content to one PNG. So that's the image. Then we'll have a, a paragraph here and we'll say watch on your TV and then we'll have a paragraph and this is kind of long. So I'm going to paste this in. And this one, I want to have that. Remember, we have that text dark class. I'm going to add that here. So that this this one is white and this one is dark. All right, so if we take a look at what this looks like now. You can see it doesn't look very good, but we'll fix that. So that's the first grid item. Um, what I'll do now is just copy this div. Okay, that's the first grid item. Let's paste in this, change the image to 2-2. The heading here, 
just gonna grab real quick and text okay so and then again oops just copy that all right so this is going to be dash three image and we'll say use any computer and watch right on netflix.com all right so those are that's that's it for tab two content as far as the html now it doesn't look very good so we're going to go ahead and style it so let's jump into our css and go under the tab one content so right here And we want to first target the content top. So we have ID tab to content and then a class of tab to content top. Okay, and we want to display as a grid. And let's do grid template columns. Now, the part that, I, that I'm styling right now, if we look on Netflix, is this top part. And I don't want even uh, columns here. This, the text should be longer than the area with the button. So what we'll do is we'll say for the template columns, let's do two FR for the first and then one FR for where the button is. All right, we'll add a grid gap of one rem. and justify content to the center and align items to the center. So let's take a look at ours, which is right here, and that looks pretty good. So that's the top. Now we want to do this part, the bottom, which is the three images, which we want to look like that. So let's uh, You know what, we'll just copy this whole thing we just did and then change this to bottom. And we're going to display grid. Um, I do want to add a margin top just to move it down a little. But we want display grid. However, we have three even columns. So we want to do repeat. Let's say repeat three times one FR. And grid gap, I'm going to do two rem. Just separate it a little bit more and let's do a text align to the center. All right, let's take a look. So there we go. So that little bit of styling made it look a hell of a lot better. Uh, the, this text right here, I do want to be bigger, but not as big as our text large or text extra large. So let's actually create a text. Let's do a, a text medium. So in our HTML, let's go to these sections here. So right here, watch on your TV, we'll do class text MD. And we want it here and here. All right, we'll just add that down here to our text classes. I'll just copy this. For the text MD, let's do 1.5 rem. So let's see what that looks like. Why is <clears throat> excuse me? Why is that not working? Oh, I didn't change that. All right, so that looks pretty good. So that's tab content two, or I should say tab two content. So now we want to do tab three content, which is the table. So tables suck. I always hate doing tables, but uh, I'll probably paste in some of it just because there's a lot of markup when you when you create a table. So let's go back to index HTML. And now let's comment out tab two content, which ends here. So we're just going to comment that out. And I meant to put a, a comment here that says tab to content and then directly under it we'll say tab three 
All right, so for tab three, same idea, we're going to do an ID tab dash three dash content and also a class of tab content item. Okay, and this is going to be, uh, let's see, we're going to have above the table. Let's go to the Netflix site above the table. We're going to have this right here. Um, however, I'm not going to align it like this. I'm just going to have them on top of each other just to save a little time. So let's have our class of text center. And then we're going to do a paragraph with the class of text LG, which is our large text. And we'll say choose one plan and watch everything on Netflix. And then below that, we're going to have an A tag with BTN and BTN LG. Okay, and this text is going to say same thing as all the other buttons. Watch free for 30 days. All right, so if we take a look at that, where is ours? So that's ours right here. So now we're going to create the table. So let's go directly under where we did the text center. And let's create our table. So I'm going to give this class or give this a class of table because I don't like styling elements directly, um, you know, unless it's going to be a base style. So we'll have a T head, which is the table head. Whoops. Uh, T head and table row. So since these are headings, we want to use TH tags. The first one is going to be empty. And then we want our plans. So we have basic. Uh, we have standard and premium. Okay, so that's the T head and then we're going to have the T body. Now I'm going to just kind of paste these in these rows one by one and you can copy them. And of course, you can get it from the description the link in the description. So this just, you know, monthly price, whatever. Um, and then the price is here. So let me grab the next row. So these are just features HD available. And then we're just using font. Awesome. Either a check mark or uh, uh, a times, which is the X mark for each one. So we have HD available. We have Ultra HD available. Let me just grab the rest of these. All right, so let's go back up here. Ultra HD available and then we have screens you can watch on the same time. One, two, four, watch on your laptop, so on. Unlimited movies and then these are all checks. Cancel any time first month free. So that's our table. So let's save that. And if we take a look, it looks absolutely horrible. So we're going to go ahead and style this. So let's jump into our CSS. And go. Let's go underneath. I'll go right here and style our table. So the table itself, let's do a width of 100% and let's move it down. So margin top to rem and actually I think that's all we need for the table itself. Now for the table head. So if we do class table T head and then TH, we want those to be uppercase. This is the plans. So text uh, transform uppercase and then let's add some padding. So padding is going to be 0.8 rem. Okay, so if we look, you can see that these are now all uppercase these plans right here. So let's see, let's do um, basically the table. Uh, these TDs here, all these. 
So we'll say table and T body and then TRTD. So I'm going to change the color to be a little darker, the text color, and then add some padding. So 0.8 rem and let's do 1.2 rem and I want to align everything to the center. Okay, so if we save that and take a look. Okay, now the issue here is I don't want I want all this stuff centered but not this. If we look at, you know, over here, same thing. You see how this is all centered but this is not. So what I'll do is I'll use a pseudo class of first child. So we'll basically grab the first TD. Um so what we can do is copy this because this grabs all of them but we we just want the first so we can you do colon first child and then we'll just say text align to the left so now if we look all this is not centered but all this stuff is all right now we also want every other one to have this gray color So we can use another pseudo selector called nth child and we can do odd. We can do even or odd um, along with many other things. And if you're in, more interested in this stuff, you can check out my Udemy course, my modern HTML and CSS from the beginning. Um, but let's go ahead and let's grab. We just want the TR, which is the whole row rather than just the column. And we're going to say nth child. We want all the odds and we want to add a background of 222. All right, so let's save that and go back. All right, so this looks good, but I don't want these see these lines, these spaces here. So what we can do is go back into where we styled the table and let's just add here a border uh, border collapse and set that to collapse and then I'm going to set border spacing to zero. So now we don't have that that division. It's just all one row. All right, cool. So that's all set. Now the last thing, the last element is the uh, HTML. I'm sorry, the HTML. The last element in the HTML is the footer or the last part. So let's go under the section here. and we're going to go ahead and put a footer semantic tag here and give it a class of footer as well. Okay, now the footer is is pretty simple. We're going to have a paragraph here that just says, you know, questions, call. I'm just going to grab this real quick. So, questions, and then we're just going to have a div with the class of footer dash calls that are just going to have a bunch of ULs, a bunch of unordered lists with links. Um, so I'm going to grab those real quick. There's going to be four of them. So UL and then each one, you know, we have FAQ, investor relations, ways to watch. So if you want to just if you want to grab this from the, the code in the description or copy it, whatever you want to do is fine. All right, so Let's save that. Now if we look at what that looks like, it doesn't look very well. So we need to fix this. So let's go to our CSS and let's go under the table. We'll say footer. So class footer. Um I'm going to set a max width here. I didn't use a container because I want the footer is going to be a little wider than the container. So let's do a max with of 75% and let's do margin we'll do one rem top and bottom and then auto on the left and right so it's in the middle and then overflow uh we'll do auto okay and then the text both links and text I'm going to style so I'm going to say footer and footer links I want the color to be a little darker and I want the font size to be a little smaller. So we're going to do 0.9 rem. All right, and then the paragraph 
the questions and the phone number basically. Let's just add a margin bottom to that of 1.5 rem. Okay, so if we look at it now, you can see that it's now inside of a container. It's a little wider than the rest. So now this these ULs, remember these are in a div called footer calls, and that footer calls I want to display as a grid so we can display the ULs across in columns. So let's grab footer footer calls. And let's do display grid and grid template columns. We're going to repeat four times one fraction. And let's add a grid gap of two rem. Okay, and then I just want to add a line height on the on the list items because they're going to be too close together. So footer li. Let's do a line height of 1.9. And there we go. All right, so we're pretty much all set as far as the CSS aside from the responsiveness. There's a few things we need to do because right now, I mean, it's not too bad, but we, we want to change some things here. So we're going to add a couple media queries. So I'm going to go down in the CSS to the very bottom. And we're going to have one media query for 960 pixels or less and then one for 700 pixels or less. So let's do at media. And we'll say for max width 960 pixels. Um, first thing I'm going to do is make the showcase The height of the showcase normally is what 93 viewport heights. I'm going to change it to 70. I'm going to push it up a little bit. Okay, and then remember we have that high dash SM where our, where our icons are and there's some text. The text I don't want that to display, so I'm going to say display none. So if I save that and you see this text right here when I make it 960 or less, you see that the text goes away. Also, um, this go, this gets higher because it goes from 93 viewport heights to 70. Okay, another thing I want to do is the the logo, the image here. I want this to move over to the side. So let's do showcase top image. We're going to say from the top 30% and from the left. 5% and then I'm going to set the transform translate to zero. So now if we go back now it's over to the side. Uh, let's see this the H1 we, we want all this stuff smaller basically so let's do that. Let's say showcase content H1. Let's set the font size I think it's 5.2 by default. We're going to do 3.7 and change the line height to um, just one. All right, and then the paragraph showcase content paragraph. Let's change the font size to 1.5 rem and save. Okay, so looks pretty good. Um, The button is is too big. So let's say for our button XL. Let's do font size. 1.5 rem. We'll lessen the padding a little bit. So 1.4 and 2. Actually, yeah, I think that should be good. Let's try that. All right. So now it's a little smaller. Good. Um, also, the text sizes I want to be a little smaller. So let's grab text XL. And we'll make that 
and we'll take uh, LG and let's make that 1.3 and then MD. Let's make that just one one rem. Okay, and then the <coughs> excuse me, the footers. So the footer, I actually want this to be just two columns instead of four. So what we can do is take the footer. Actually, let's put this above the utility stuff. So footer calls. It's already displayed grid. We just want to change the grid template columns to repeat instead of four. We're going to do two one FR, which will do two columns. but in two rows. So if we go Oops. Why isn't that working? Footer calls. Oh, I think I have to add footer since I did that up above too. There we go. So now you can see that it's in two columns instead of four. So break points right there. All right. So now I mean, things look pretty good here. Or where is it here? But if we go to I mean, we can't see the rest. All we can see is the table here. So I'm going to uncomment. This stuff. So tab two and tab one. So we'll be able to see them all at the same time for now, but it won't be for long. Basically, uh, once we get to 700, which is like around here, I want these to stack. All right, so let's let's do that. Let's create one more media query for 700 pixels. So max width is going to be 700 pixels. And Uh, let's see. So we have tab one content. Tab dash one content and we want the inner because remember tab one content inner the class is the grid. That's what we put the grid on. So we just want to say grid template areas. I'm sorry, grid template columns. We just want to set to one FR, which will just stack everything. And then let's text align to the center. All right. And yeah, that should do it. So if I save that and we take a look now, I know it's kind of hard to tell what we're looking at because it's all we have everything showing at once. But we're looking at this right here, this section. So instead of being side by side like it is here, now it's stacked. All right. Now we want to work on tab two, which is this right here. And we want that to be stacked. And remember, there's top. So tab to content top and tab to content bottom. So let's add those in. Actually, you know what? I'll just paste these in because this is last. This video is lasting a long time. So I'll just go over it. So tab to content top. We're displaying block instead of a grid now and just centering it. Okay, the bottom. Um, we actually don't need all this stuff. We just want to do one FR. which will stack everything. So now you can see everything is nice and stacked. Good. Now for the utilities, I think the only thing I want is the extra extra large button. Actually, no, that we should be okay. We should be all right. Um, but the the inset shadow here See how dark it is like it looks good here, but as it gets smaller, really small, the I think we should change the the inset shadow to not be so deep. So what I'll do is grab. Let's just put in here showcase after because that's where we have the shadow. Um, let's copy from way up here. the background in the box shadow and put that in here and what I'll do actually we don't need this if you want to make it lighter you can you can uh, make that less 
but I just want to change the box shadow to be instead of 120. Let's take both of these and make them 80. So 80 and then this one's negative 80. Um, this one here, you know what? Let's just make this all 80. So yeah, we'll just do 80 and then negative 80. So now if we go back, now we have less of a shadow on on smaller screens. All right, so I think our CSS, our HTML and CSS is all set. This looks really weird because all of this is showing, but now we're going to add our JavaScript to prevent this from happening and add the tab functionality here. All right, so let's go to our JS, main.js. And there's a lot of different ways you can do this. Um, this is just uh, a pretty easy way that that I decided to do this so that people could understand it that aren't, you know, JavaScript uh, uh, gurus. So I'm basically going to grab all the tab items and all the tab content items from the DOM. So let's say tab items. And what I mean by tab items is, you know, the icons that you click on. So we're going to document dot. Now there's more than one. So we're going to do query selector all. And we want to grab the class of tab dash item. And if we look in our HTML, it's these. Okay, each of these has a class of tab item. So that'll grab all of those and that'll put it into what's called a node list, which is similar to an array. So basically we have to loop through it and do what we want to do. Now the tab content item, I'm just going to copy that down and call this tab content items. We want to do query selector all and we want all the tab dash content dash item classes, which if we look in our HTML is each one of these. Okay, so each tab content. So those are what I want to grab from the DOM. Now we need an event listener for when we click on uh, a tab item. Now, since this is, like I said, a, a, a node list, it's like an array. We're going to loop through it. So let's say tab items and I'm going to use a for each here. So for each item, I'm going to actually I don't even need curly braces. I'm just going to take that item and add an event listener. I'm going to listen for a click. And when it's clicked, I'm going to call a function called select item. All right, so I'll just put a comment here. We'll just say listen for tab click. And then we're going to create a function. Let's put a comment here. We'll just say that this will select tab content item. So we'll add a function here of select item takes in an event parameter. Okay, now we're going to start off with just the border, changing the border. Now I can simply add the border, Let's say add border to current tab. And we can do that by taking this since we used a function here. So we're clicking or we, we have this function we can access whatever the particular item we're clicking with this and we can add a class by using the class list dot add method and we want to add tab dash border. All right. Now, if I save this and I go back and I click this, OK, nothing's happening. Um, Oh, did it, you know what? I don't think I included the I didn't include the JavaScript file. So down at the bottom, right above the body, let's do script. Uh, script source JS main JS. All right. So now let's go back. And if I click this, we get the border. But the problem is the border stays on the other ones as well. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to call a function here called remove border that will remove the borders from all of the items before this happens. And then I'll create that function. So remove border. And what I'm going to do is loop through the tab items again. So I'll do a for each and I'll say for each 
item. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and take that item and take class list and remove tab border. Okay. So if I save that and now I go back and I click that, you can see what happens is it removes it from any other, removes it from all of them, but then it puts it on the one I click. Okay, so simple way to to get that functionality. All right, now we have that done. The next thing we need to do is initially hide all of our tab content items. Okay, so these right here. We want to hide all these by default and we're going to do that within the CSS. So let's go in our style CSS and go up to the area where we have where we're dealing with these content items. So right here we'll go right under tab content. Let's say hide content uh, initially. So I'm going to grab the ID of tab one content and I'll just copy this down. We want all three of them. So two, three. And let's set this to display none. So now if I go back, you can see that there's there's none showing. Now we want to show the correct one when we click on the correct tab. Right. So what I'll do, uh, actually, we need to add our show class as well. So right under that in the CSS, we're just going to have a class of show. And instead of displaying none, it's going to go to display block. And I'm just going to put an important here so that it always works so that it, it takes precedence. Okay, and the idea is to just get this show class Um, onto the correct content. Now, if you remember, if we look at the first tab content right here, we added the class show. So that should actually show right now if I go back, which it does. But we want to be able to switch to different um, tab contents. So to do that, let's go back to our JavaScript. And Uh, just like we remove the border from the rest, we want to remove the show class from all of them first. Otherwise, it's just going to add the show class to all of them and they're all going to show as we click. So it's going to be very similar to remove border, except I'm going to call it remove show. And again, we're, we're instead of going through the tab items we're going through the content items. And for each one, we want to remove the class of show. All right, and then we want to call that right here, remove show. And then down here, we need to grab content item from the DOM. Now, I'm going to use a little uh, trickery here to select what I need. When we click on an item, we can get its ID. Right. In fact, let me just show you if I console log, I can say this dot ID and I'm going to go back here and open up my console. And if I click one of these, you'll see I get tab two. I click that. I get tab three, tab one. Now, remember the name of the the, the content. It's tab one content, tab two content, tab three. So I'm going to dynamically um, select those and the way that I'm going to do that is by creating a variable here called tab content item. I always do that with O's for some reason. I don't know why, um, but I'm going to set this to document dot query selector. Or I could use get element by D, but it doesn't really matter. And then I'm going to use back ticks in here because this is going to be dynamic. I'm going to select the ID. And then I need my this dot ID variable. So I'm going to use my template literal syntax here to get the ID. Now, remember, this is going to be tab dash one or tab dash two or tab dash three. And the item that I want to target is going to be tab dash one dash content. 
So I'm simply going to put in dash content. That way it grabs the correct one. All right, then we just need to add the show class to that specific one. So we can then say tab content item class list dot add and we want to add show. All right, so let's try it out. So it's going to show this one initially because it already has the class of show. We added that in the HTML. Let's click this one and there we go. It what it does is it hides or it takes away the show class from everything. And then it targets whatever because this is tab one or I'm sorry, tab two as an ID. It's going to then show tab two content. I'm going to hit this one, which has an ID of tab three, and it's going to show tab three content. Okay, this one is tab one content. So now we can just go to each one. Okay, and, and like I said, there's a, a, a million different ways to do this. I thought that this was a pretty easy way to um, to to make this happen. And I didn't want to use jQuery or anything like that either. Uh, but yeah, that's that's pretty much it, guys. Oh, one thing I forgot to do is the icon here. Remember, we gave it a class of BTN icon. It's because I wanted to move it over a bit. If we look at the Netflix site, you can see it's over quite a bit. Um, so let's go. Let's add that real quick. I'm just going to put it with our utility classes, our button utility classes. Chair right here. So we'll just say BTN icon. And let's do margin left. One rem. Okay, so that pushed it over a little bit. So that's it, guys. Congratulations if you went through this whole video and completed it. I know it was a long one, um, but that's it. If you like this, please leave a like. Please share. Um, if you can become a patron, patron for a dollar per month, that would be fantastic. Uh, YouTube ad revenue isn't isn't doing too well, and I really love providing free content for you guys. So if that's something you're interested in, uh, there's always a link in the description. So thanks, thanks for watching, and I will see you next time.